Hello and welcome to Diplomata. I'm Francis Sune. Timor-Leste struggle for independence, which culminated in the 30th of August 1999 ballot, has left it in a total destruction. As the consequence, this country had to build from the scratch. And since day one of that process, Timor-Leste has a number of good and loyal friends to help. One of those rare friends is Brazil. And to see a clear picture of what it has done to help, we'll have its current number one diplomat in Dili in this episode to explain. Ambassador, thank you very much for giving us your time to do this um, interview. I would like to begin the conversation by talking about your background, your history, uh, if that is okay. Thank you very much for coming to, to my residence. This is the official residence of the Brazilian ambassador. Uh, my name is Mauricio Assis. I am the Brazilian ambassador to Timor-Leste, which is a country that is a brother, a brother of Brazil. Brazil and, and, and Timor uh, were both uh, ex-colonies of Portugal. Brazil, next year, Brazil will celebrate 200 years of independence and Timor-Leste, 20 years. So we feel, we feel like a, a bigger brother, an older brother of Timor-Leste. And we are very proud of this fraternity. And so this is an honor for me to, to be interviewed by you, to be in touch with your audience and the Timorese people that watch your channel. Thank you very much for, for having this opportunity. Let us go back a little bit to your childhood. How was it to be a child in, in Brazil? Yes, I, I, I was born in Natal, which is a, a city in the northeast of Brazil. It's the closest, if you, if you look at the map, it's the closest you can get to Africa. In front of Natal is the Atlantic Ocean, and in front is the African continent. And, and this is a very uh, tropical region in Brazil. Uh, it looks a lot like Timor-Leste. All the, the coconut trees, the mango trees, the kids playing in the rain. So it feels, it feels a lot like being in, in, in Timor-Leste to be in Natal. And, and even the people, look like the same, uh, uh, gente morena, we say, people uh, that go to the beach and live the, the, the tropical life. So my, 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 my childhood, uh, I was born in Natal. My, my father was from the military, from the Air Force. So we moved a lot in Brazil because the military, uh, uh, a military officer has to, to, to move around the, the, the air bases. So I had my, my childhood in different cities, in the Amazon, in Belém, Manaus, also in the south, in, Bra in Rio, in Brasilia. I lived in Brasilia three times in my life. And, and so my, my childhood was, was, was very good. Uh, uh, I have good memories. And including the time that uh, uh, I wanted to be a pilot when I was a kid, like my father. Moving from place to place must have had some some effect to your education. So, how was it coping uh, with moving from one school to another uh, from time to time? Yes, yes. Uh, my my family got used to it because we had to move like every three years. We had to be in a different uh, place because of my father, and uh, it, it was it was at the same time uh, uh, sad because we had to change friends, and all, all my friends that uh, let's say I, I, I met in in, in Belém uh, after three years I had to to move and lose my friends and start new friendships, uh, but it was very interesting at the same time because I could be in contact with new people. I have. In this, in this moving around, I have maybe a hundred friends in, in my childhood because I, I moved a lot. And my education was, was uh, quite good. I, I, I went to, to some public schools. Uh, and my, in my, when I was in uh, high school, I was in the military college 
which is from the Brazilian Army. And uh, I study in the military college in Manaus, in the Amazon, and then we moved to Rio, where I finished high school. My, my, my three years of high school was in, was in Rio, the military college in Rio. So I, I, I had this military background uh, uh, experience growing up with a, in a military family. Dreaming to be a pilot, then you ended up becoming a diplomat. So what is the story behind it? Yes, it, it was my, my childhood uh, a dream to become a pilot, a fighter pilot, not a, a commercial uh, pilot, and like my father. And uh, in the end, when I, was, when I finished high school, I, I tried to enter the military Air Force Academy, and, but I didn't pass the, the exam. So I was like, oh, what now? <laughs> because I never thought of anything else. But then uh, uh, I, I did the, the examination for, for the University of Rio, uh, Rio de Janeiro Federal University, for geology. I, I thought, okay, if I cannot be a pilot, I will explore oil and gold and, 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 and be a geologist. So I passed the exams and I started to study geology. But then I changed again. I changed to international relations because geology was, had too much uh, uh, chemistry, uh, 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 physics, subjects that I, I, I didn't uh, appreciate much. And when I was a, 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 a child, um, I, because I was interested in military history, I started to, to, to learn about uh, through military history, I started to learn about uh, international politics. The Cold War, I, my, my childhood, let's say in, in, the, in the 70s and 80s, I, I would read in the papers about the Cold War, the, the USSR against the USA, the, 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 the communists against uh, capitalists. And, uh, and so that started to, to to be the, the subjects that I, I really liked. And when I was in university, university I, I changed to international relations. Do you think having a military parent is one influencing factor in you getting interested in international politics? Yes, yes, it was. My father was very into uh, international politics and all the books he had. And I, in the end, I, he handed it over for me because uh, that's what I could read and, 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 and we would talk about uh, international politics. My father was very, uh, he, he, he used to, to, to love talking about politics and he, he was a, a very conservative, like most militaries are. And, and, but it, it, it was, for me, it was a, a great experience and to share this, this passion with my father. And then uh, he moved, and that was my, 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 my last moving with, with my family. He moved from Rio to, to Brasilia and I entered the University of Brasilia where I graduated in international relations. Tell us about the, the, the beginning of your career in politics. Um, how did you, after the university, how did you start? Yes, when, when I was in, in finishing, when I finished uh, 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 international relations, I had in Brasilia uh, a very good uh, professor. He, he was, he was uh, my, a kind of tutor and, and, and he was a diplomat. And when I, when I finished my studies, he invited me to work for a UNDP project in our chancery, in our, in our foreign affairs ministry. And I started to working uh, as a junior consultant, that was the position, the lowest one in the ranks of, uh, of UNDP. And uh, it, it was in a division of, uh, that dealt with uh, science and technology cooperation. So I, I had just been graduated and I was started immediately 
uh, to work with this uh, international cooperation, and it, it, it was great. But was, I was not yet a diplomat. So when was it that you started to think uh, to start your uh, life being a diplomat? Yes, when I, when I was working in our Ministry of uh, Foreign Relations, uh, I, I, my bosses, all my colleagues were diplomats. I, I was into them, in, into, this, uh, into this environment. And all, all my friends, my colleagues would say, oh, why don't you study to become a diplomat? And in Brazil, uh, the Diplomatic Academy is something uh, very difficult to enter. You have to study a lot, a lot. Uh, not only uh, uh, English and French, and, and, and law, international law, economics, uh, geography, history, uh, uh, lots of subjects, and the examinations are very tough. Uh, it was, it, it is, it still is one of the, one of the most difficult examinations, together with uh, the exams uh, people have to do to become a, a, a judge or. A, uh, magistr magistrate and so it's uh, very competitive uh, the exams lasted for for months because each each test would take four, four hours you have to, to write a lot and th th there were interviews uh, oral tests I had to present my ideas to to a board of ambassadors it was very very scary at the time but I I, I, I follow the advice of my of my friends and I study hard and I entered the, the internet the, the diplomatic academy which is called Instituto Rio Branco that's the name of our school Rio Branco was a, the founding father of Brazilian diplomacy he was the one that organized that, our ministry and it, in Brazil, this institute is one of the oldest in the civil service. It has, uh, this year, it, it celebrates 75 years. And it was the first, one of the first uh, uh, civil service uh, 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 organizations that had uh, public examinations for, for entering. So. What is the most interesting thing uh, being a diplomat what is it to you yes the the, the first thing is, is the the idea that you can uh, defend the interests of your country and you, you you can imagine when there is the the world cup people get crazy about their national teams imagine that you are really engaged in in defending your flag, and 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 the idea of we have that we have of of our countries, our nation, our people, and the interests of of our nation, our people, our governments, and 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 that's what diplomats do. They 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 go abroad, they go serve in embassies and consulates in in delegations in the in the international organizations and they defend the interests of their countries and that's what I do. I defend the interests of Brazil and try to promote uh, these interests, uh, uh, to promote the friendships with the, the countries that I, uh, where I serve, uh, to promote uh, trade, to promote uh, cultural exchanges, to, to promote uh, cooperation, like we do here, cooperation, educational uh, uh, exchanges and technical cooperations in different areas. And that's what I do do. And, and, and also the diplomat uh, has the mission to, to understand the countries they are living on. So when a diplomat uh, comes to, to, to a new posting, he has to study the, the history of the country, he has to learn about uh, the, 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 the sociology uh, uh, of, the, of the country, the peoples, uh, the cultural aspects, uh, and, every, and every category of, of knowledge, uh, like uh, the, the, the economy, 
the, the national institutions, the, the justice system, let's say, the parliament, the works, the, 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 the internal, the domestic politics, the foreign policy also. So it's a, it's a job of constant learning you have to study all the time, when you are a, a, a third secretary until you are a, a, an, amb an ambassador. You have to study, you have to read about the country, you have to engage with people, uh, you have to know the, 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 the media like we are doing now, knowing you, knowing your your, your, your job, your work, the, the, the reach of the, of the media agencies in, in the population, how, how they relate. And, and so this is, uh, I, I think this, this is, for me, it's the most interesting thing. Where have you been posted before Timor-Leste? Yes, I, I started my career uh, first uh, in Brasilia, uh, of course. Uh, my first assignment in Brazil was working with the administration of the ministry. Uh, I, I worked in, in a division of uh, staffing planning, uh, how to allocate people to different postings. And, and then my first uh, embassy abroad was in Madrid, Spain. And I stayed uh, three years in Madrid, and then I was transferred to the Consulate General of Brazil in Sydney, Australia, another three years. And then I went back to Brasilia and stayed there for four years, and, and still working with, uh, with the administration. My career was basically, in Brazil, my career was basically into administration. And then uh, I went abroad again, uh, this time to Hanoi, Vietnam, where I stayed uh, for three years, and then uh, Shanghai in China at the consulate, where I stayed for two and a half years. And then went back to Brazil, this time as a director of a department uh, of, uh, of uh, uh, information technology and security also in, in administration, and then for the first time assigned as ambassador to Timor-Leste. Any most memorable um, events or experience throughout your career, especially overseas? Well, I, I had wonderful, uh, wonderful experience uh, when, when I was in, 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 in Sydney. It was the first time I, I was working with the uh, consular matters and consulates uh, they they do a lot of uh, uh, notarial and and, and, and and kind of bureaucratic work with all the all the papers and documents you have to legalize but the consulates they also work helping Brazilian nationals abroad and one moment of, of great pleasure for me, a satisfaction for what I did, was helping people in, in Sydney, young Brazilians that got in, into trouble, and you know the Brazilians like to party, and, <laughs> and there were hundreds of, of thousands of Brazilians uh, studying in Sydney, and, and sometimes I had to help them to, to, <laughs> to, to, to get out of, trouble uh, uh, trouble in, 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 in Sydney and it was very satisfying and an another moment was in, in, in Vietnam I, I was head of the trade section uh, I was the, the trade commissioner at the embassy of Brazil in Hanoi and I had to promote uh, trade uh, exchanges uh, with Brazil and, and I helped uh, Brazilian companies to, to, to come to Vietnam, to know the, the Vietnamese market. And it was very interesting because the embassy could really do a, a great job for them. Uh, imagine that some companies have no idea how, how, is the, mar how the market uh, uh, works in Vietnam and the embassy could then tell them how the market uh, works and, 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 and how the pro what are the products that are of interest for, for, for Vietnamese importers. 
and it was a very satisfying job also. And then again in, in Shanghai, it, it, was, it was also a very uh, pleasant uh, posting, uh, with also with the consular uh, aspects and uh, the Brazilian community, things like that. It was very satisfying. What about Timor-Leste? What have you find, found most interesting in, in this country? Yeah, so, like, like I said in the beginning, uh, the first thing that we, we Brazilians think when we come to Timor-Leste is, is how, how, how close we are, uh, uh, first in the geography, like, uh, like I said, we, we have in Brazil the same, the same landscape the beaches, the coconuts, the mango trees, and, 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 and the people, the, the, way, the way the people are more relaxed and more friendly, this, is, this looks a lot like Brazil. Uh, the difference uh, is uh, Dili, for the Brazilian standards, Dili is a very small, a small city. Uh, in Brazil, uh, we, we have hundreds of cities bigger than, than Dili. And some cities like Sao Paulo with 20 million people. So uh, the scale is, is totally different. Uh, Timor Leste is, is, is a very small country uh, comparing to, uh, to Brazil, and, and this causes us uh, an impact. Oh, the, 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 we are used to, to long distance. Here you can cross the country in a, in a, few, hour, in a few hours. In, in Brazil, the distance. Uh, are much bigger uh, but what I liked most uh, uh, my first impressions of Timor was how the Timorese uh, relate to the Brazilians and th this surprised me uh, I didn't expect uh, that and I was very well received every time I say that uh, I'm from Brazil I feel that uh, I'm, I am welcomed and this give me, gives me some pleasure to be here and, and, and it, it helped me to, to, to be more engaged in my work and with in all levels with government uh, since from the president to the to the taxi driver when when I say that I'm from Brazil I, I feel a reaction a positive reaction and just to end this segment of the conversation how about the family life um, do you have your family here in Timor Leste? And, yes. And how has that been uh, for the family, as a, a in general? Yes. The the the, the families of, of the, the family of a diplomat uh, has uh, not not the same not the same uh, uh, challenges because we also have the, the professional dimension of these challenges, but they, they have the challenges of moving around to new, to new countries, new cultures. But at the same time, they have the pleasure to be in contact with different cultures and so. Uh, I have three daughters that are living in, in Melbourne with my ex-wife. And, uh, and, and then I, I, I got married again when I was in Vietnam. Uh, I met my, my wife, uh, Hami, in Vietnam. She, she, she studied Portuguese there, and we met, uh, and, uh, and I, we started talking in Portuguese, and it was a big surprise for me. And we, we got married, uh, and we have a baby. We just have a baby here, Fabricio. He's five, five months old. He was born at the Fatumeta maternity. He's uh, Timorese, uh, Vietnamese, and Brazilian. He has three nationalities. He's a true diplomat son. Thank you very much for this pleasant conversation. Thank you very much for staying. You're still with me on Diplomata. Ambassador, when did you first arrive in Timor Leste? I arrived in, in, in Dili in December last year in the middle of December and uh, I went into quarantine and, uh, and then started working in January and I waited for presenting my credentials which I did in March 
And then came the lockdowns and, and so, so the year quite didn't start in 2021. It's starting now and it, it feels like uh, we, we have a lot of things to do that we didn't do in the, in the first months. Um, how was your reaction when you first heard that you would be posted in Timor Leste? What did you know about Timor Leste? Yes, uh, uh, when I, I, I first knew about Timor Leste when I was uh, uh, at university. Uh, I had uh, in my in, in, in my at University of Brasilia, I have some, I had some friends from Africa, from Portuguese uh, speaking countries. Uh, some friends uh, from uh, Cabo Verde and, and uh, Guinea and Angola, and Angola and they at that time they would talk about Timor we are talking uh, about the end of the uh, like a 1988 to 1991 when things were were happening here and and uh, it, it wasn't in the media but these friends from, from Cabo Verde and Angola, they would talk about the, the Timorese cause. So that was the first time I, I heard of Timor Leste and, 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 and started to understand what, what was happening here. And, and then when, when I was uh, invited uh, to, to, to become ambassador of Timor Leste, for me, it was a, a, a good surprise. Uh, I, 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 I was assigned and, and, and uh, the, I received the mission uh, uh, from my, my foreign minister. Look, we, we, are, we are into uh, the Asia Pacific, we are into the Portuguese uh, speaking countries of uh, CPLP, and, and, and Timor Leste is an intersection of these uh, two uh, lines of the Brazilian foreign policy, and, and for me it was very, very interesting to, 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 to be assigned to, to, to be ambassador here. How did it feel to start a mission when there was the, pandem the pandemic and the, the lockdown in Timor-Leste? How, how were your first days? Yes, uh, to, to, to the, the, the first thing was was the difficulties to, to get here. The, the, there were no commercial flights. We had to, to use a charter flight uh, from Lisbon. And uh, so th this was like a going uh, to the other side of the world because Timor-Leste is exactly at the other side of the globe from Brazil. And, and, and not having the... the the normal ways of, of, of travel, and th this was a challenge, and we are almost lost <laughs> the, the flight because we we, we plans to, 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 to have the, the COVID test in Sao Paulo, but uh, when we we, we, we we went to check in in Brasilia, they asked the, the test, and no, no, we are going to do it in Sao Paulo. No, no, you have to present the test now. Well, we almost lost the flight, uh, but in the end we, we, we managed to, to get the test and uh, it was hard. Uh, it was hard uh, not only for me, for, for everybody and all the restrictions and uh, my wife was pregnant at the time, so one layer of difficulty more, and, but in the end everything worked and here we are. So, what have the Brazilian emb embassy in Timor done with, in terms of cooperation, in terms of projects with the, the Timorese government? Yes, uh, <clears throat> Brazil has been in Timor Leste since the UN Transitional Authority administration, since Sergio Vieira years and uh, we supported uh, Timorese independence we supported all resolutions regarding UN resolutions regarding uh, the right of the Timorese to choose uh, 
uh, your destiny. And uh, when there, uh, there was the, the, the referendum, we, we had uh, a group of Brazilian uh, politicians and, and lawyers, uh, judges, uh, military, people from all segments of, of the Brazilian society that were supporting uh, Timor Leste. So at, the, at that time, uh, still in the UN transitional authority, we had the first Brazilian uh, uh, consultants, uh, uh, Brazilian uh, technicians that came here to help the Timorese to, to establish the first uh, Republican, let's say, the Republican institutions in the judiciary, in parliament, in the government. And so it's, it's been uh, 22 years almost of uh, Brazilian presence in Timor-Leste. Uh, we, 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 we participated in the military force that came and since the beginning of the Brazilian arrival here, the Brazilian military arrival here, we got into the military police segment of the cooperation. Uh, Brazilian army uh, officers uh, made the, the protection of Xanana uh, Guzmão, of Ramos Horta, all the, 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 the major Timorese authorities. Uh, it was the Brazilian military police from the army helping the, the, what would be later the, the Timorese military police of uh, Falintio FDTL. It was the first uh, uh, signs of that would be a good cooperation in this segment. Um, apart from the assistance in the military section of, uh, of Timor-Leste. What else um, did Brazil do? Yes, one, one uh, major challenge for the, the Timorese leaders in the very beginning, when you retook your independence, was to establish uh, the judiciary. Uh, and uh, we were asked by, by the Founding Fathers to, to bring Brazilian lawyers and Brazilian judges and, and prosecutors to help the Timorese to create their, their judicial bodies, the, the tribunals, the, all, all the, all the, the uh, procuradoria, uh, promotoria, and, and one segment that we, we helped uh, to create was the public defenders, uh, uh, Defensoria Pública, which are attorneys, lawyers uh, that help the poor people to go through a, a, a judicial uh, process. And we, we had the Defensoria Pública in Brazil that works very well. It was created by our, our constitution of 1988. And uh, not many countries have this, this kind of institution, but for a developing country is something that really, really is really useful. Because the poor, they have the law, the law says that they have access to, 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 to justice, but in reality, they don't, they don't have the money to hire lawyers. So the public def defenders, uh, uh, they, are, they, they are the only option for, for the poor people to have access to justice, and they do this job. And this is a project that uh, has been going on for 15 years. Uh, Brazilian uh, Defensoria Pública uh, of Brazil, uh, and, and Defensoria Pública de, de Timor-Leste. And what are you working on these days, especially since the, the end of the lockdown? Yes, we, we 
besides the, the, the military uh, police cooperation, besides the Defensoria Pública, we, we had, uh, since the beginning also, uh, a very strong uh, 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 relation with the educational system in, in Timor-Leste. We, we, we created some uh, cooperation projects in, in education, we brought from Brazil uh, dozens of teachers that would train uh, Portuguese uh, uh, Timorese teachers in Portuguese language. Uh, it, it was a project that lasted for uh, almost 14 years. We also helped uh, uh, Timor to create the Senai de Becora, which is a vocational training uh, uh, institution. We, it was a, a cooperation that lasted for uh, also almost 14 years and helped to, to graduate lots of hundreds of, of young Timorese into bicycle, uh, motorbike uh, maintenance, uh, 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 electricians and, and, and civil construction, basic things. And the, 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 we, this, this perhaps was one of the most uh, uh, productive and successful projects. But and now we are, we are still with, uh, uh, in the educational uh, cooperation, not anymore with the teaching of, of Portuguese, but with the university, with the UNTL. We, we, we have a project that uh, is starting now, to help UNTL to create a master degree in education. We also have uh, 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 a project that is still being uh, organized. It's not uh, uh, going on yet uh, with the Peace Center that deals uh, also with the university, that this project deals with uh, helping uh, poor farmers in the mountains, poor farmers to, to work with uh, ecological, sustainable ways of producing uh, 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 agricultural crops and different uh, uh, techniques of, of producing without using uh, pesticides and, and things like that. And, with the engagement of the, the, the small uh, societies into the, this ecological agriculture, eco-agriculture, let's say. This is another project that we are, we are dealing with. We have uh, some small projects with uh, SNE, with the Information Serviço uh, Nacional de Informação, where this project is, is, is being uh, it's in the last phase, it's just a finishing up. We have a, a project uh, uh, with the, with the uh, Tribunal de Recursos uh, in the area of information technology. We, we have uh, the Defensoria Pública uh, uh, project. Uh, we are bringing two Brazilian uh, lawyers to, to to work with them like we've been doing in the, in the past 15 years. It's in the, the, this project is in the eighth uh, phase. Um, each phase lasts for about two years. And let me think of uh, another project that we are doing now. We, we, we are engaged with the Ministry of Agriculture and the World Food Programme. To, to create a project that will help uh, farmers in Atabai. Uh, it's it's uh, a project that we will, will use uh, humanitarian uh, aid from Brazil to do that. So th these are small initiatives that we are building. Uh, uh, some of them are not yet uh, into, into place but will be in the, in, the, in the next few months. The two areas that Brazil was helping Timor um, 
helping Timor with our very difficult areas, uh, the military area and um, the judiciary um, area. What were the challenges um, helping a very new nation, a new baby, um, setting up these things? Yeah, so I think the, the main challenge, I, I've been here for, for, for just a few months. The, the year, like I said, the year has not begun. It's beginning now. But uh, from my little, small experience, what, uh, the, the, the main challenge is the small scale of things here. In Brazil, we are used to, to deal with uh, institutions that take care of millions of people. And when we, we, we try to transfer Brazilian experience to Timor-Leste, this challenge of working with small institutions, institutions that will reach the, the entire Timorese population of 1.3 million. This, this is a challenge because we, we are used to, to work in larger scale. So let, let's say with the military, uh, we, we have this cooperation uh, going on. We have a major of the Brazilian army that is a military instructor of the military police. We train uh, uh, platoons of soldiers and, and Timor-Leste has just, uh, the, the Falintiu has just admitted 600 new, new soldiers. But uh, from these 600, how many will go to, to the military police? Just a fraction. So you see, the small numbers are a challenge because we want to bring Brazilian instructors, uh, instructors here, but first we have to, to create this group. So this is one of the challenges. The second challenge, besides the small scale of things, is the Portuguese language. We, 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 we know that Portuguese is, is together, besides Tetum, is an official language, but only the older, the older, uh, 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 Timorese uh, in the public service, only them have has have the the complete control of the the use of the language. So when we bring uh, Brazilian uh, teachers here, let's say, or instructors from from the army, or judges, or lawyers, uh, the reality that the Portuguese is not a spoken language in the streets in the even inside the institutions. Uh, this makes uh, things harder because we have uh, to, to learn Tetum, which is not difficult because there are lots of words from Portuguese. Usually the Brazilians in a few months, they, they, can, they can manage uh, some Tetum. And also working with English, which is natural, is a, is a work language. And, and if, but for, for the Brazilians, the, what they expect, oh, I'm going to Timor-Leste, oh, I will talk in English, oh, in, in Portuguese. And, and then that's, that's not true. Uh, with a few people, they can, they can talk in Portuguese, but when they are going to, to do their work, they, they have to, to, to speak Tetum. And, and, and that is, is a challenge. Not, not, not a very difficult one, but it takes time. And, and usually, let's say, the, the, the public defenders, they, they, they come here, uh, they, they have the, the, the facility that the laws are written in Portuguese. This is a, this is a, a huge uh, uh, facility for, for a lawyer, of course, but they have to deal in a daily basis in, in Tetum, and they, they have to study Tetum. And, and, and not only the, the, the language, the, the cultural differences also. Uh, we have, well, not, not only the Brazilians, the, the Australians, the foreigners, they have to know the, the Timorese culture, to understand some ways of thinking. Uh, uh, I, I see the Timorese are very shy, and sometimes you have to, to provoke you, Timorese, to, to speak more, because otherwise you are shy to, to, to tell things to, to, 
to Amalai. They, they, this is for, for, from, from your, your cultural uh, background. It, it's interesting because in Asia in general is like that. Uh, when I was in Vietnam, when I was in China, I also saw that, that uh, people are very shy and Brazilians are very expensive. They, 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 they start talking and they don't stop like me now. <laughs> Apart from working with the government, um, what other institutions do you work with? Um, the diplomatic uh, uh, entities, for instance. Do you, who else do you work with? Yes, uh, he, here basically I work with the government, with the university, and and uh, parliament. Uh, the, the, there are some aspects of cooperation. Uh, there, there is a. There is a group of Brazilian uh, people that came 20 years ago, almost uh, in the beginning of the of the of the new independent uh, republic. Uh, they came as uh, teachers, as workers of NGOs, as missionaries from from the Catholic Church evangelicals to work with uh, all kinds of some, sometimes technicians some ex, uh, experts sometimes just voluntary workers in different segments of the Timorese society and these people they came here very young and lots of them they they loved Timor they stayed some of them went back to Brazil and came back later. Oh, no, no, my place is in, in, in Timor. They, they, they felt uh, welcome. They loved the countries. They are here until today. I'm talking about, uh, let's say, 12 families of Brazilian uh, 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 nationals that work with NGOs. Uh, some of these NGOs have prospered. We have uh, uh, Casa Vida, Proema, uh, uh, which work with uh, young uh, women and help them to, 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 be, to, to empower them uh, in different aspects, in education, in, 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 uh, sometimes uh, they work with the victims of domestic violence. So they, they, they help these, these ladies to, to, to get their feet back uh, the ground. Uh, we have some, some people that work with trade, some, some, some people that came to be chefs in restaurants here and, and they, are, they, they have kids that speak fluent uh, Tetum and they, they, they raise their families here. Some, some missionaries went to the, to the mountains to work in different places and with some with uh, agriculture, some with also NGOs, uh, Projeto Montanha in Ailil, uh, lots of lots of Brazilian uh, nationals into uh, Catholic missions and evangelical missions. So th this this is great for me as an ambassador because I have people that can tell me, can translate to me the Timorese reality from, from different perspectives. So this is really useful for me. I'm, I'm very grateful for, for their help. Uh, we, we have a small community of, Brazil, community of Brazilians here. Uh, it's about, uh, I don't know, maybe 140 Brazilians. Uh, very united. Uh, we, we exchange we have a, a group in WhatsApp. We exchange information and tips about what's happening, and, and very one one supports the other. When when there was the the the, the flood in, in in April, the Brazilians got together. We helped each other, and lots of them went into voluntary work to 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 help poor family families that were. Uh, affected by the by the waters, and it was beautiful to see the, the Brazilian community working together with Timor-Leste. How is it working with uh, with Timorese? What experience do you do you gain working with 
Timorese in your office? Yes, in, in my office I, I have about eight uh, uh, Timorese local staff. They are very, very helpful for me. Um, they know the, the ter terrain, let's say. They know how to, 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 to walk through the, all the different uh, bureaucracies and, and, and different institutions, how to get to, to, to their leaders. So this is this is very good. We every embassy needs this kind of help. We we, we cannot do it by ourselves. Uh, working with the Timorese, the, the, the Timorese are, are, are very uh, uh, shy. Let's say they they are not. Uh, if I don't ask, they will ne never come to me and and start talking. And and this is very different from from. What happens in Brazil? Brazilians are, are more communicative, and, and so. But it, it's not something that uh, I, I think is bad. It's just a different way of, of being, and and and, and uh, acting uh, socially. And but they are very very kind always. And, and like I said, uh, we Brazilians feel that uh, the Timorese are, are receptive. To, towards Brazilians and this make us proud and, and make us more comfortable here. And how is it working in your view, despite the short period of your presence in Timor, how is it working with the Timorese government? How have you, how have you found the Timorese government um, since you work with, since you uh, work with them? Yes, uh, in, in my position I have access to the top of the Timorese uh, government. So, so these are people that are very well educated and they, they have uh, a sophisticated view of things, uh, which makes my work easier. And, and dealing, dealing with uh, my counterparts in different organizations, uh, dealing with uh, politicians, with directors of, of, of the departments and divisions. Um, some some of, of these leaders, they, they spoke, spoke, uh, speak Portuguese, which makes my, my work easier. And some, some of them went to study abroad, so we can exchange some ideas with the, with the same referentials. This makes also my, my life easier, and uh, but uh, I'm I'm very well impressed with the with the Timorese, the the, the people that I, I have been in contact. I think they are very very good in what they do. In the last day of conversation, have you been able to visit uh, places outside of Delhi? Yes, yes. Uh, I was I was in, in well the first place I went when when I I finish. Uh, my quarantine. I wanted to to, 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 to go and explore, and it, it was before the, the cerca sanitaria, before the closing the the, the, the city. Uh, I went to Ailéu to to know the people from Projeto Montanha, and it was a wonderful experience. Uh, going up that road with all that big trees and this was fascinating and the way the the the, 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 the climate uh, was changing as you you were uh, uh, climbing the mountain and, and the vegetation was changing the weather was changing it was very 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 interesting and then i was invited uh, three times by the minister of agriculture to go to to some uh, rice uh, rice crop uh, ceremonies and and cutting cutting the, the the rice in the mud with the minister and I'm I'm very grateful to him to, to have invited me. Uh, usually he, he would also invite uh, President uh, Ramos Horta and, and and some other ambassador so we would talk and, and, and enjoy the, the the experience of knowing the countryside because agriculture is an area that uh, we haven't yet 
explored in our, in our cooperation uh, agenda. So one of my ideas is to create projects in the agricultural field and these this, uh, exchanges with the Minister of Agriculture was, was very good. We, we, I, I could, in these trips, I could know the, the, some aspects of the Timorese reality. In Brazil, we, we have the, the agriculture uh, sector of the economy as the, the, the powerhouse of the Brazilian economy now. It, uh, agriculture in Brazil is very well developed. We, we like to say that we feed uh, a billion people and we export uh, billions of dollars of uh, agricultural products to the world, to China, to all countries. We are the biggest producers of uh, soy, of chicken and lots of, of uh, agriculture uh, <coughs> goods and products. We have this very technological advanced uh, agriculture and we would like to help Timor to, 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 to go into this way, uh, to help the small farmers to be in touch with new techniques and, and regarding also the ecological aspects of it, uh, things that are quite new even to, to the Brazilian farmers. Uh, but are, are, are ready to, to be technologies that are ready to be transferred through cooperation projects. That's what we want to do here. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure. Thank you very much. My interview with Ambassador Mauricio has helped me understand what Brazil has done to Timor. And I believe you too feel the same. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you have enjoyed the program. And I will see you in the next episode of Diplomata. I'm Francis Suni. Bye for now. <laughs>